Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Pass Money. I'm Kirby. That's Alex over there. Yeah, I got a little stain drop going on right there. <laughs> a little water. But um, today we're going to talk about uh, when do we believe the next recession will happen? I mean, of course, you see in the news media everywhere, possible recession, possible recession, possible recession, coming, coming, it's coming. Um, so today we're going to just dive in. Of course, before this video, me and Alex didn't talk about this, so we might have different opinions about when we believe the recession will commence. For just giving a little backstory, we average historically at least a recession every, you know, eight to 10 years. Um, so, I mean, I don't count the COVID, that COVID dip as a recession, even though some people might call it. But I mean, just normal economic times, it's about an eight, 10 year gap. Um, so with all that being said, just wanted to give you an understanding of that. Alex, I'll let you start it off first. So what is your belief on when the next recession is going to come? I could see it happening later or starting, I guess, starting to be really announced uh, later on this year. Say in the, say October-ish, I would assume, um, just because I that pushes it out about another quarter or so. Um, and I mean, truthfully, we've been hearing about recession, recession, recession since COVID. So people have had so much time to prepare. Um, right. So if anything, you know, people that were preparing, they should have a good uh, nest egg or investors should have, you know, a lot of reserves ready for um, upcoming deals and stuff. But I could I could see it getting announced more within about five, I'd say about five months. And I think we're already starting to see more articles and uh, news alerts about company layoffs and more severe, you know, things. Before it was just, oh, there's COVID, companies are, you know, locking down and stuff. But now you're seeing companies start to like pose a threat towards the, the workforce with AI and cutting costs by letting go of employees. And so it's it's starting to get really interesting right now. You know, so if you say it'll be announced in about five months, so you think so you think in five months that's when the recession will start? Or I think I would think that in, in about five months, or I say five months, but I would say like more towards the end of the year that we'll start to really see um it, the impact, I would think. All right. So uh with so so everybody can understand, this is more for the audience, not you. A recession is when we have two consecutive quarters of negative GDP. So just FYI, last year we had two consecutive quarters of negative GDP. I believe it was quarters two and quarters three. But then that's always historically been the technical definition of a recession. Um, because of midterm elections and things like that, um, you know, the powers to be, in the political space said, no, we're not in a recession, even though technically that's historically how we judge the recession moving forward. And so GDP is gross domestic product. Just to give everybody uh, understanding, the GDP for the first quarter was a positive number. And uh, the number, I believe, was, as soon as I find it here, because I just was looking at it, it is, I believe, 1.6. 1.1, sorry, 1.1. So it was a positive number for the first quarter of 2023. And that's from the months of January to March. Um, for me, uh, but before I go on, please like and subscribe. Uh, please smash that like uh, subscribe button. That's the one we like the most. Um, you know, they help us out, grow our channel to pass along information. But with all that being said, I actually believe we are in a recession today. And so, Alex, to your point, you said you believe it'll be announced around October. So for it to announce in October, that means we, for them to announce a recession in October, that means we have to have two consecutive quarters of negative GDP. So, and like you, I agree, it'll come around that October time frame because that'll be the end of the third quarter ends in September and they announce the third quarter in October. But I believe that will be the uh the two consecutive quarters. I believe this quarter we will have negative GDP. And then 
I believe the quarter from July to September will be negative as well. Uh, but what I mean is I believe we're in a recession today because when they announce a recession, it is talking about the previous six months. So previous six months, that means the recession has already started, but you just find out six months later. So when the announcement comes, we're already six months into the game. But I believe starting uh, Q, Q2, Q2 was the start of the recession. So April was the start of the recession. And you're starting to see more things uh, matriculate, especially in the news media about job layoffs. Um, you're starting to see people pull back on spending. You already seen um, the government take about uh, more than a couple billion dollars a month out of the SNAP food stamp program. Uh, they're redoing the social security uh, aspect of it from back in the COVID time. So I believe that will have a drastic impact on GDP. And then you add to the fact we got higher interest rates in the housing market. So, so supply supply is not up there. The number of houses uh, being bought and sold uh, month over month, quarter over quarter, week over week are declining from the uh, months, quarters, and years prior. So I believe the beginning of the recession start started in Q2 and and as you stated, you know, companies going bankrupt. Um, we had, and just so the uh, people understand, we've had more small businesses file for bankruptcy in the last 12 months than we had during COVID. So this, imagine that COVID was bad. It was no economic activity at all. Now in the in 2023, we've had more, I said 12 months, but I really mean three, six months. But we've had more small businesses file for bankruptcy in this time frame than we did in COVID. So it's only getting worse from here. And I believe the start of the recession, like I said, was about 30 days ago. What you got? Yeah, I think like just looking back at COVID, we um obviously we saw like this huge mass shutdown on companies and stuff, but we saw the government really step in and try to help the middle class. There were really low interest rates. People didn't have to pay their rents. They didn't have to pay their mortgage. They didn't have to pay student loans. And now coming out of that, we're starting to see all these major changes that are supposedly supposed to hurt the rich, when in reality, they're hurting the working class, the lower class, the middle class with higher interest rates. Um, and we see it a lot in Florida, too, where, you know, the average Floridian that has been here for, you know, decades, um, they're struggling now because they're still at a job that's paying thirty thousand dollars, thirty, thirty five thousand dollars a year. And uh, mortgages are double now, you know, in um, housing prices have gone up 50 to 100 percent since, uh, you know, 2019. Um, and we're seeing, you know, all these interest rates going up, there's layoffs, there's people still not making enough money. And, you know, it, it's like, there, we're act, it's like, there's actually things that are happening now instead of, whereas COVID was just like, oh, everything's just shut down temporarily. Now we're starting to like see all these major effects. And, you know, I think, what is it? The minimum wage in Florida right now is what, like 12, 13 an hour or something like that. And I believe by 2026, it'll get to $15 an hour. Yeah. And so I think that falls short of, I think, I think it falls short of 30,000 a year. And there's, there's a lot of companies that are paying that too. Um, you know, these entry level positions that are just paying like right at minimum wage or right above minimum wage. And so right. We don't have these California jobs or these New York jobs, but the people that seem to be doing all right are the people that are coming straight from New York and New Jersey. And we've seen a lot of those people being able to come in, buy houses, put big down payments down or buy houses cash or, you know, sell their houses up there, come down here. Um, I actually know uh, someone that's here now that just sold their house in Kansas City and they just bought a house cash in Florida. But for a Floridian to have purchased the house that they just purchased would have been like insane because that same house probably would have gone for about 200,000 and they probably just paid 400,000 for that house. So I think right. 
you know, it's it's hurting the the average day citizen right now. I think we're seeing more effects than we were before. In Florida, let's I mean I'm just gonna bring it to Florida, but nationwide, but Florida in general, COVID COVID alone, it hurt, and we can do another video on this, but COVID actually hurt Florida. Uh what I mean, Floridians, the people that was already here, it hurt them more than it helped them. It hurt. You remember, Florida was where the retirees went, you know, fixed income. This is where they went to retire. At. Now, Florida damn near priced those people out of the market altogether um, because they don't fix income there. Fixed income is not increasing uh, fast as inflation is in Florida. The cost of living in Florida is insane. Like you said, $15 an hour, I believe it comes out to like 28 but hold on, let me, I don't want to say it, mess that up. So 15 times 40. 2,400 a month. Uh, and then times 52. So it's it's a little, it's 31,200. 31,200. And I mean, you divide that by 12, just 12 months in a year. That's 2,600 a month. And that's before taxes. And rent in Florida now, especially in the mid, mid Florida, central Florida, and then down south Florida, a one bedroom is costing, uh, you know, 12, 12 to the highest one I seen was 2300 That's so even people on minimum wage, they can't afford, they can't afford the cost of living that's here in Florida. And most of the people that work in Florida and working at minimum wage jobs is native, native Floridians where $31,000 just, you know, a couple of years ago was enough to make it sustainable. But now, you know, with the higher cost and the, and the cost is not coming down. And I don't want people to believe that's what a negative GDP is not going to bring the cost of living down. It's just not going to rise as high with all this inflation. It's just not going to rise uh faster than it, it, it was, you know, with the COVID years and things like that. But I mean, just walking around seeing it, like I said, I was at the mall uh, a couple weeks ago. I wasn't buying nothing. I was just going to take my mom off for a walk. But we were in the mall and everybody's walking the mall, but nobody's uh nobody's buying nothing. There's no bags in hand, just people walking the mall. Um, you start to see restaurants that, you know, we're big foodies over here at my house, but restaurants that we normally frequent you know, for the past, you know, five, seven years, you know, it's a line around the corner, got to get reservations. Now you can walk there same day, no reservations, and it's seats open. So the dynamic is changing, money is tightening up. And then, as you say, the interest rates, interest rates are increasing along with the price of housing here in Florida, but around the nation, that's what's going on. That's turning the middle class, that's hurting the middle class. And then rents is at historic all-time highs. That's hurting the middle class. And then, you know, you brought in the uh, avenues of, you know, AI and outsourcing jobs and companies are starting to look at their bottom line to see where they can trim the fat to uh, make uh, to prepare their self for a recession. And I always say it is people need to run their household like a business and stop running it uh, on a paycheck to paycheck model. They need to look around the corner, my favorite words. So businesses are already trying to trim the fat to prepare for a recession. Households need to start looking to see what's coming down the road and start trimming the fat now to prepare for a recession. Again, they're not going to announce it. And I believe it started in April. They won't announce it until sometime October, November, uh, like Alex said. And I believe that. But you got to prepare now to go to for when that happens, because if you wait to October for the news media to tell you we're in a recession, you're too late for the game. And then you're going to be scrambling because everything else didn't already, you know, matriculated and dropped. You see it, you know, with the Amazons, the Googles, the Facebook. Yeah, they overhire people, but they're cutting more people than they hire. You start to see it in small businesses. You start to see it everywhere. You start to see it in corporations. I mean, that's just what's going on. And if you don't prepare yourself, then... You're going to get lost in the wash. And then, of course, it's going to be everybody else's fault. But yours. But if you subscribe to the channel, I already know that you are already preparing yourself and doing things like that because we've been talking about this for weeks. Do we know? I'm just telling you where I believe. And could I be wrong? 100% I could be wrong. But I'd rather be wrong and already prepare for a recession today and be wrong in October than not prepare today. And then I'm right in October. And then 
I don't have nothing, nothing to show for it. So that's where I'm at with it. Right. I agree. Um, and you know, it's, that's the biggest thing prepare because I saw people during the time of COVID that were having this entitled mindset, people here in Florida that had this entitled mindset of, um, yeah, we need this assistance. They weren't paying landlords. People didn't even understand that you're renting from an investor. You're renting from a landlord, you know, someone you're renting from a person. It's not like some entity just like owns this, like a robot owns the property. It's, it's a person that has their own uh, life as well. And so when you affect those people that unfortunately have that hold over you when the tables turn then as we talked about in another video all these landlords started jacking up the rent and you know what do you expect so you know rather than have that mentality of like you're entitled to anything just you're not entitled to nothing do the work and you know prepare your family for whatever is to come right and and just fyi to people and they thinking they might be thinking just like covid Oh, the government's gonna come save you. The government's not coming to save you. And Alex, we you brought it up, you know, and I want to reiterate one point that you brought up. On top of you know the higher cost of living that is you know plaguing the whole nation, student loans are about to come back online. So people haven't been paying student loans for three years. Now that's another bill that's about to come back online that's going to buy, and that's going to take more money out of the supply. Uh, out of the demand supply to go there. So that's, you know, that's averaging for $400 per person. And it's millions of people that will be paying that. So that's billions of dollars that will be taken out of circulation on the demand supply because now they got to allocate that money to student loans. So that's another domino that's about to drop. Supreme Court should be coming out uh, by the next couple months or so. But by August, student loans will be back online. And that's going to be something that's going to compound that. But the government is not coming to save you Meaning the government, I don't believe, is going to pass out a stimulus check for this one. Do I believe the recession is going to be 08.com? Uh, no, I don't believe that. But it will be a shallow recession, and the people that's unprepared will be hurt the most. The people that is prepared will be the people that take advantage and then grow their wealth uh, during a recession. They're going to get underpriced assets. They're going to be able to do and move and function if they're capitalized correctly to make stuff happen. But the people that's not, they're going to get left in a wash. And that's how wealth is made during hard times. So if you're not prepared to make any moves in hard times, then you're going to be screwed. And then you're just part of, uh, you know, as people say, the matrix. And you're just going to have to live live off that. You just have to live off what everybody else is doing. But it will be movers and shakers, people that's taking advantage. I got plans to take uh, advantage. You know, if hard times get, if hard times come, uh, even if hard times don't come, I got a plan to take advantage. But the key is preparing early, starting early, start building up your uh, cash hoards to take advantage when those times come. Because I 100% I believe if you start trying to build it up when a recession comes in and then everybody's, you know, everybody's scared and fearful and then your job, you know, everybody's worried about their job. You won't have the capital to take advantage of distressed situations too make you and your family welcome absolutely with all that being said guys if you like the video hit the like button leave a comment down below subscribe share and we'll see you guys in the next video